Welcome to the July 12th, 2021 meeting of the Snusky City Commission. <clears throat> Prior to tonight's meeting, we'll have an invocation offered by myself, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, we ask for your wisdom as we make some tough decisions in this meeting. Help us to carefully consider the relevant information that has been gathered. Help us to be innovative as we brainstorm solutions. Help us to wisely evaluate our options, considering the pros and cons. Help us to be unified in making the best possible decision and to effectively carry that decision out. Amen. 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 I would like to supplement uh, my invocation by asking for the blessing upon our friend, Talon Floor. About 10 minutes ago, I was advised by his family that the donation of several of his organs have either saved or prolonged the life of four individuals. God bless Talon Floor. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. <laughs> Ms. Briggs, will you call the roll? Mr. Brady? Here. Ms. Twine? Here. Mr. Meinzer? Here. Mr. Waddington? Here. Mr. Poole? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Commissioners, you have before you the minutes of our meeting of June the 28th, 2021. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. I move that we accept the minutes of the June 28th meeting and dispense with the formal reading. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second discussion. Without objection, that motion will be approved. Hearing no objection. That motion is approved. Are there any residents in the audience that have questions pertaining to tonight's <coughs> agenda? Agenda questions from the audience. Ms. Spriggs, are there any questions uh, that you've received by letter or email pertaining to tonight's agenda? Yes, President Brady, I have two. The first comes from Tim Schwanger of 362 Sheffield Way in Sandusky. He said in regard to item number four, uh, transit, the Sandusky taxpayers' cost for this transit system continues to grow, drawing more attention to the need to bring Erie County into the mix for cost sharing. In regard to item eight, the TIF, he said, if the tax increment financing agreement generates more than the estimated $200,000 annually, what account will the extra dollars go into and what uses will qualify for the overage? The second uh, comes from Mr. Matt Ames of 2204 Mill Street in Sandusky. In regard to item eight, he wrote, the current use of the TIFs should be under scrutiny by our current city commissioners. I respectfully ask that an ordinance be created to form a committee to analyze and create recommendations for, in quotes, a more transparent, equitable, effective, and understandable TIF system. Call it the TIF Study and Formulating Committee. A moratorium may be in order until we better understand the long-term financial effects on the city and specifically on our public school system. In the meantime, there are other tax incentives for developers to take advantage of, such as property tax abatement or payment in lieu of taxes pilot that could be utilized. I ask you all to put down your pencils so or no new TIFs until the study is complete. We must always be thinking of the long-term ramifications in regards to these financial instruments, as well as communicating the benefits and risks to the public. The criticism among residents is that the city may be missing out on capturing tax revenue from growth and development. Those questions will be addressed as that legislation comes before us. Tonight we have a public hearing on the 2022 tax budget. That hearing will be conducted by our Director of Finance, Michelle Reeder. As this is a public hearing, there will be time for public questions and comments as well as questions and comments from the commission. Thank you, commission. Thank you, commission president. The tax budget is an Ohio revised code requirement, section 5705. This requires us to have an annual tax budget prepared and submitted to the county auditor by July 20th of each year. This public hearing is also an ORC compliance item. Failure to submit a tax budget could result in a denial of receiving future local government funds. The tax budget allows the Budget Commission to review the anticipated and historical revenue and expenditures for each fund. The tax budget is comprised of current year estimated, 
estimated revenue and expenditures along with the two previous years of actual revenue and expenditure figures. The Budget Commission will review the tax budget and generally look for any over or underfunding of each established fund. Once approved, this tax budget helps determine funding for next year. As a general reminder of the city's budget for the timeline for the budget, Section 50 of the City Charter requires the first draft of the city's budget to be available by November 1st of each year. Section 51 of the City Charter states the appropriation ordinance cannot be approved until the second Monday in January and must be approved by March 31st of each year. City Commission will need to approve a temporary budget for calendar year 2020 later this year and ultimately pass the 2020 budget by March 31st of 2022. As stated previously, this tax budget legislation is required by ORC and must be approved annually. Uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions or comments regarding the tax budget. Ms. Briggs, do you have any questions, uh, public, public questions? I did not receive any. Do we have any questions from the audience regarding uh, this, this hearing? <clears throat> Commissioners, it's our turn. Questions or comments? Well, this is a very quiet group. Mm -hmm. If there are no questions, I will consider this public hearing closed. Thank you. Commissioner, do you have before you several communications from staff regarding various legislation? Can I have a motion to accept these communications? So moved. Second. But a motion and a second discussion. Not objection. That motion will be approved in hearing no objection. That motion is approved. I'm going to break out of our agenda for just a moment because I see uh, Mr. DeCesar in the audience and I know that he is here with a gift in hand and I, and I do not want to be ungrateful and have him sit through a, a couple hour meeting if, uh, if he doesn't have to. So Mr. DeCesar, if you'd step to the podium, we are glad you are here. Mr. Brady, thank you very much, but I would have gladly stayed and, and listened. Um, Several years ago, uh, I was before this commission. Many of you were here that evening and asking for your uh, approval and, and well wishes on our project, Water Street Lofts. We were looking at some of the uh, correspondence and Eric, I realized that our first conversations with yourself and uh, Jonathan, your predecessor, Matt Lasko, started in 2015. Um, so it was a, it was quite a, it was a long road, um, but as we, um, get to the completion of our project, which we anticipate will be done in full and all homes transferred in October of this year. Um, I just wanted to say a couple things. First of all, we've done a lot of projects. I started in business in 1992. Um, many, thank God, that have been very successful. Uh, and I realized that over the years, uh, our success, we can't take credit for solely. It, it really comes from a lot of help. Uh, in this particular case, uh, Mr. Brady, members of the commission, I think I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the fact that you have an incredible staff. Uh, when you talk about public-private partnerships, uh, this was exemplary, whether it be um, Jonathan and your predecessor, um, the city planning folks, uh, Aaron Klein in the engineer's office and certainly Eric Welpser in the city manager's office. Um, clearly every hurdle that uh, we faced, we met as a group, overcame as a group, uh, and they deserve as much credit for bringing $5 million worth of new housing to downtown Sandusky. So to all of you, thank you so much. Um, one of the really nice things about being able to work in the city for a number of years is to be able to watch what has transpired in the five years that we've been here. And, what a remarkable job your city has done. One of the things that we are most impressed by, um, not the city in general, but the remarkable vision your commission and your staff has in transforming uh, downtown Sandusky into a model. Uh, we've worked in a lot of urban areas. I don't know that I've been in one that I've enjoyed more or appreciated the evolution more. And one of the things that we are so impressed by is the amount of programming that you do at downtown Sandusky. So, uh, we thought it was really appropriate and it's such an honor for us to ask you to accept a donation to further that programming for your community. And we brought a check tonight in the amount of $10,000. We hope you will accept it graciously. Thank you very much. Um. 
Mr. DeCesar, we're going to deal with that in the motion under the, under the manager's report, but we will not let Mr. Whoopser leave with the check. Okay, all right. It seems I mean, fair I mean, enough. And honestly, uh, yeah. Mr. DeCesar, none of us ever get enough out of boys. The platitudes that you've just praised upon staff, we believe are well-deserving also. And, and thank you for believing in this city and for your investment in this city. And uh, I know it, it always takes longer than any of us think it's supposed to take. But uh, we've, we've turned the corner and come out the other side, and you're, you're a big part of downtown. Th thanks, for, thanks for investing in us. It was my pleasure, sir. Awesome. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Murray. Since Mr. DeCesar is here and you've threatened us with a several-hour meeting, <laughs> I wonder if it might be appropriate to make a motion to accept that donation now. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, I think we should take a roll call on that. Mr. Price, will you, give, will you call the roll on that motion? Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That motion is passed, and thank you for the $10,000. Pleasure, sir. Thank you so much. Jonathan? You want to get a character? Oh, it's <laughs> to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure. Commissioners, we have six consent items to consider this evening. Do any of you wish to move any of these items to the regular agenda? Ms. Briggs, will you present the consent agenda? Absolutely, President Brady. Item A uh, is to adopt the tax budget for 2022. Item B are, is the appropriations amendment, number two. Item C designates depositories of the city of Sandusky. Item D is a change order, number one and final, for the CDBG uh, fiscal year 20 demolition project, number one. Item E is a change order, number one and final, for McCartney Road reconstruction, storm sewer, and storm pump station project. It's a deduction and a time extension. And item F is a li liquor permit transfer to Barra Restaurants, LLC. Commissioners, having heard these ordinances, resolutions, and liquor permits, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Meisner. I make a motion to accept the consent agenda items A through F and declare all ordinances, resolutions, drafted, presented to the City Commission under consent agenda. It shall take effect in accordance with the full, uh, with the section reflected in the ordinance and resolution, whether it be in accordance with section 13 or section 14 of the City Charter. Second. Been a motion and a second discussion. Ms. Briggs, you call a roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. And now on the ordinances, resolutions, and liquor permit hearings. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. Those ordinances, resolutions, and notice to the Division of Liquor Control that we do not require a hearing are approved. Now turn to our regular agenda. Mr. Briggs, we present item number one, please. Item number one is an ordinance authorizing and approving a grant in the amount of $100,000 to Lake Erie Island Cruises, LLC, to assist with efforts to return the Good Time One to the Jackson Street Pier, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioner, have you heard this ordinance? How do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Mr. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. Been a motion and a second. Discussion. I think all of you are aware that we have had a, uh, what I would call a storybook ending to this, uh, this saga, and uh, it is uh, uh, due to the uh, hard work of an awful lot of people, including you six commissioners. Um, our strategy to uh, get the city in somewhat early, I think, worked well because I, uh, I know the Good Time raised a significant amount of money on their own uh, through donations and through forgiveness. So uh, it seems uh, so rare anymore that we get a, uh, a very good ending on a, on a situation like this, but I think we have one now. Ms. Briggs, do you call roll in motion? Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That ordinance is passed. <clears throat> Ms. Briggs, you present item number two. 
Item number two is an ordinance declaring that certain real property owned by the city as part of the land reutilization program identified as parcel number 59-00466.000 located at 936 West Market Street is no longer needed for any municipal purpose and authorizing the execution of a purchase agreement with respect to that real property and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. second. And a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Murray. I was curious to see that it was the Corsos with very long roots in our community who were the first to strike out uh, in, in this particular area with infill housing. This area has a tremendous amount of uh, potential and uh, the fact that it's a, a, a very smart uh, family in Sandusky with long roots is the first one to strike out there I think tells you that uh, there'll be a lot more to come because um, this is a really smart investment. So those of you who are sitting on the sidelines waiting for the right time, it's here. Now's the time. Ms. Briggs, you call roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now on the res now on the ordinance. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Yes. Waddington? Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Briggs, you present item number three, please. Item number three is a resolution declaring the necessity for the city to proceed with the proposed CDBG fiscal year 21 demolition project number one and directing the city manager to advertise for and receive bids in relation thereto and declaring that this resolution shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioner, have you heard this resolution? How do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Mr. I move for the adoption of this resolution under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second discussion. Ms. Briggs, we call a roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. And now the resolution. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. That resolution is passed. Ms. Briggs, you present item number four, please. Item number four is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a third <coughs> amendment to the transportation services agreement between the city of Sandusky and First Transit, Inc. of Cincinnati, Ohio, in relation to the Sandusky transit system and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioner, having heard this ordinance, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Murray. I move for the adoption of this ordinance pursuant to section 14 of the city charter. Second. And a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Murray. There was a, there was a suggestion that um, eventually we, we, and I think everyone in Erie County would like to see the service uh, expanded to, to uh, throughout Erie County. Um, and I, I think that's a, that's a noble um, objective. We've had discussions uh, with the county over the years. Uh, no real interest uh, that we've seen to date, um, but I would encourage those who are interested in extending service out to other parts of the county to continue uh, dialogue with the county commissioners. I think it's only if they hear uh, the, the, the need for additional service in additional areas that that's something they'd undertake. Additional comments, questions, commissioners? Ms. Briggs, you call roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now in the ordinance? Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Briggs, you present <laughs> item number five, please. Item number five is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a contract with Birch Hydro Incorporated of Fredericktown, Ohio for the 2021 wastewater treatment plant digester number one cleanout project and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. 
Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Twain. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. Is there a motion and a second discussion? Ms. Briggs, you call roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Briggs, you present item number six, please. Item number six is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a contract with Holer Furnace and Sheet Metal Incorporated of Sandusky, Ohio for the HVAC system replacement at fire station number seven project and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Harris. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. And a motion on a second discussion. <coughs> Ms. Briggs, you call a roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Briggs, you present item number seven, please. Item number seven is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase a 2022 Ford Super Duty F 450 truck and chases and crane from National Auto Fleet Group of Watsonville, California through the Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing Program for the Sewer Maintenance Division and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Twain. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of, of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. And a motion and a second. Discussion. Ms. Briggs, you call roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Briggs, we present item number eight, please. Item 8A is an ordinance removing parcels from the existing downtown tax increment financing area by amending ordinance number 18-085 to create a new tax increment financing district encompassing certain parcels of real property, declaring improvements <coughs> to certain real pro parcels of real property to the public, or to be a public purpose, describing the improvements to be made to directly benefit such parcels, requiring the owner of the improvements on such parcel to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a tax increment equivalent fund, Cook Building Improvement Fund, for the deposit of such service payments, approving the compensation agreement with Sandusky City School District, and relation authorizations pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Sections 5709.41, 5709.42, and 5709.43, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner I move for the adoption of this ordinance 8A under suspension of rules and full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. Been a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Holliday, uh, if you would uh, provide us with some context of, uh, I think you can probably give us a context on A, B, and C. We won't have to constantly be coming back to you. Certainly, Commissioner Brady. Uh, commission members will recall at your last meeting, two items were approved, which uh, puts the city in a position to pass these items this evening, creating the uh, tax increment financing district to support the Cook Building project. Uh, just as a reminder, the Cook Building is a really a transformational project right in the center of our downtown, a 30,000 square foot mixed use project, um, incredibly expensive, over $8.8 .8 million in construction costs. 
Um, it's a very difficult project to finance and something that the developer probably could not uh, take on by, uh, by themselves. But fortunately, we have um, a tool that the state provides to us, tax <laughs> increment financing, uh, whereby we're able to return a portion of the new property taxes that are generated back to the project. Under the terms of the compensation agreement, the schools uh, retain uh, or will receive a portion of the TIF proceeds, 12.5%. Uh, and the city will receive uh, the remaining TIF proceeds. Uh, we've worked closely with the Hogarfees and the schools to put this uh, project in place. Uh, we do have Rick and Megan Hogarfe available virtually to talk more about the project, and I'm happy to answer any specific questions uh, you might have about the pieces of legislation in front of you. Uh, there were a couple of uh, public comments that I'm also happy to address, uh, Commissioner Brady, if you would like. I, I think if you address those now, it would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Um, the first comment from uh, Mr. Schwanger indicated or asked about um, the uh, allocation of funds in the event that the payments are more than the estimated $200,000 annually. Um, I'll point out that the $200,000 figure is not uh, an estimate. It's actually a base <coughs> minimum payment uh, that we've negotiated with the Hoger fees. Um, that's reflected in the uh, service agreement. So the city will receive a minimum of $200,000 a year through this arrangement. In the event that the valuation is such that the payment is greater than $200,000, those additional funds will be split between the city and the schools uh, in accordance with the compensation agreement. Uh, in terms of the uh, second series of comments uh, from uh, Mr. Ames, I would point out that uh, tax increment financing projects here in the city are reviewed each year uh, by a body, the uh, Tax Incentive Review Council, which meets at least once per year to re review all TIF agreements. Um, that's really the body that's in place under state law and uh, city ordinances to make sure that the TIFs are being properly administered. Um, the TIF program does use pilots. There was a reference to uh, pilots as an alternative. Uh, pilots are actually the mechanism that the TIF uses uh, to fund these projects. So we are uh, using pilots. Um, but I think more importantly, the long-term financial effects of this project are absolutely clear to all of us. Um, absent this project, uh, that property uh, it was generating about $5,000 a year in tax revenue for the public bodies. But through this project, uh, we're able to substantially increase that amount for both the city and the schools during the life of the TIF. And then once the TIF expires, uh, that full new value uh, and new tax revenue will be going to the, the taxing districts. Um, so in, in conclusion, this is really a classic win-win situation uh, that we've been able to uh, put in place here. Appreciate your consideration this evening. <clears throat> Mr. Hargrave, if you, uh, I believe you're with us uh, electronically, if, uh, if you have uh, some comments, we'd love to hear them now. There you go. Can you hear and see us? Yes, good. <laughs> How y'all doing? You know, first of all, we'd like to thank the council for this, or excuse me, the commission for this opportunity to talk. Um, you know, from the very, very beginning of this project, we have been obviously confronted with a lot of obstacles. It truly crushed our hearts when we had to make the, the decision to demolish the Cook building, the original building, after many, many tries. Without this, this legislation, without this TIF, it would not have been possible actually to build the new thing. It had gotten to a point where it was so expensive that we, had, we didn't have enough money to actually do it. And so we had to turn to the city and to the state and to get the gap financing for this building. And so the actual present value, by the way, I know there's some questions about what the value of this, this TIF, this funding is. Really, the value is about 2 to 2.7, depending on the interest rate. So that's the present value. So basically, if you had a loan and paid $140,000 per year, that would be the amount of money we'd be able to uh, borrow. And that's the amount of money that we're asking, uh, asking Savista to borrow for this. So that's how we're finishing the gap. So this TIF actually allows us to get a grant from Ohio. It also allows us to get that funding from Savista. That's critical. And so without it, we would not have been able to do it. Now, we actually had the faith in the city, in the state, and really we knew that Sandusky couldn't have a hole in its heart. And so we began construction regardless. Um, we were going to find some way 
to do it. And, uh, and we're very, very pleased, very, very grateful for the support we have received from the city, not only from the government of the city, but from the citizens of the city themselves. It's been really a wonderful experience, and we very much appreciate all the efforts done. And we promise you that this building will be done pretty close on time and on budget. And we are doing our best to make it a building that's going to be here for another 100 to 200 years. That's our goal. We want this to stand long in our future. And it is a joint project, and that's what's so important about this. This is actually a project of the city of Sandusky. Together, we're going to finish this. And that's all we have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hogri. Uh, questions, uh, comments, commissioners? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Murray. You know, the, here's the interesting thing about TIFs. Uh, in communities that are standing still, they're not useful. Uh, they're not used, I should say. And so there isn't any controversy. Uh, in communities that are moving forward, especially older communities like ours, which has, which have historic, um, we have historical assets, and we take advantage of those, but we also have historical liabilities. And the, the uh, Cook Building is an example of an historical liability, especially when it starts falling down. Um, and that's something we would not be able to overcome without using something like a TIF. Uh, TIFs are confusing. Um, they're just inherently confusing. Uh, they're always going to be confusing when you put a lot of accounting issues together with legal issues. Um, but in a nutshell, the objections to TIFs are that we'll really like to have our cake and eat it too. We'd like to have the economic development. We'd like to have the revenue. But we don't really want to forego um, the, the current uh, real estate taxes. We'd like the schools or any other uh, entity that's receiving those real estate taxes to get them now. But without the development, you don't get the increase in value and you don't get the increase in, in real estate taxes. So in a lot of ways, it's not unlike uh, a young person um, or, or older buying a home. I mean, you're going to pay. You don't. You won't own the home for a while. Um, you're going to pay a, a lot of interest, maybe less so these days. Um, but uh, in, in the end, you're going to have that home. And if you didn't take the step to buy the home and take out the loan, you wouldn't own the home in the end. You wouldn't have it during that period of time. So we will be able to, uh, using TIFs where appropriate, and it has to be where appropriate. I completely agree with that. Uh, uh, we are able to advance the cause of economic development bring in additional revenues uh, for the city by way of income taxes and other associated benefits, um, and uh, also immediately provide an advantage to the schools and to the other entities which receive these uh, real estate tax dollars. So this is something that I favor. I'm glad Mr. Holliday pointed out the, the uh, body uh, that uh, currently reviews TIFs. The other body that re reviews TIFs is this body, um, and we've historically uh, scrutinized these and uh, We've made great use to these, great use of these, I think, to the great benefit of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Additional comments or questions, Commissioners? In, uh, in kind of picking back off of uh, Mr. Murray's comments, uh, I think it's I think it's valid, and I think Mr. Holliday's pointed out that uh, no one, no developer is winning the lottery on these kind of projects. Uh, they they can happen. Uh, the margins are so very thin that the only way they can happen are oftentimes are with TIFs and with, with very, very creative types of financing and, and infrastructure improvements. We aren't passing these out uh, like candy. Uh, we are not doing them in a vacuum. Uh, they have to pass the scrutiny of Mr. Holliday's department. They have to certainly pass the scrutiny of the Board of Education and they have to pass the scrutiny of, of these seven commissioners. So there are a lot of checks and balances. And, and to think uh, that we are going to put our pencil down and, and not create or not approve any more TIFs, I think is uh, being very, very short-sighted. Um, I, I, for one, hope that we get opportunities for many more of these, because that will mean that development is continuing. And I, I think that's uh, the city's benefited by that up till now, and I, I, I'm hopeful that this city will continue to benefit from uh, these kind of uh, opportunities. <clears throat> Additional comments or questions, Commissioner? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Poole. I, I agree with the majority of the comments that you just made and all of what Mr. Murray said. I would suggest that what was, what was suggested, not that it with regard to putting our pencil down, really when you read into it, it's just a reflection of the community that does not understand totally what we're doing. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, Mr. Holliday made a, a very good presentation to, to, to start us in the direction where the public understood what a TIF actually meant. 
uh, what's been presented today in this comment appears to be simply asking us to look at other options for uh, other than TIFs for utilization for when we're doing development, <clears throat> which is not, I would say, probably put our pencils down is just a phrase that he probably didn't need to use, but that's really all that's been requested here. I'm not familiar with what in detail about taxes in lieu of uh, uh, payment in lieu of taxes or other things he suggested, but I would submit that it's not short-sighted to ask us to look at them. So may I suggest that Mr. Holliday, and when we do another TIF, which is fine, I'm, I voted for the TIFs we've done, and I think we've done a good job with them thus far. Uh, perhaps you might take a moment to, to just touch on why we've done that instead of these other uh, suggestions that was made by the individual that wrote in. Certainly, Commissioner Poole, we always, uh, at the beginning of any project, look at all available options. And in this case, uh, tax abatement certainly was an option. Uh, the limiting factor with tax abatement. I didn't need an explanation. Oh, okay. Just as we go to the next yes. time we do this, include it in the presentation for the public, and that will preclude these kinds of questions. This individual is, is not necessarily short-sighted. He simply doesn't have uh, the information that you folks apparently already have and did not share with us. Thank you. Ms. Briggs, you call roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Stay. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Stay. Mr. Murray? Yes. That ordinance, <coughs> ordinance A is passed. Ms. Briggs, you present ordinance B, please. Ordinance uh, 8B is an ordinance approving a compensation agreement with Sandusky City Schools District relating to improvement funds established for the Cook Building TIF area, authorizing and directing the city manager to execute the compensation agreement and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, have you heard this ordinance? What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Twain. I move for the adoption of Ordinance 8B under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. Then a motion and a second discussion. Ms. Briggs, will you call the roll on the motion, please? Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? <coughs> Abstain. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now in the ordinance. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Staying. Mr. Murray? Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Briggs, you present item number 8C, please. Item 8C is an ordinance approving a service payment agreement with Cook Building LLC, establishing that Cook Building LLC shall pay service payments generated from the development of the Holgraphy Cook project authorizing and directing the city manager to execute the service payment agreement and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioner, have you heard this ordinance? How do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Meisner. I move for adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. But a motion and a second discussion. Ms. Briggs, will you call a roll on the motion, please? Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Stay. Mr. Murray? Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Stay. Mr. Murray? He yes. That ordinance is passed. That concludes our regular agenda and we'll now turn to our city manager for his report. Thank you, Commission President Brady, commissioners, audience, and staff. I'll start with donations. Uh, no need to do the first donation, as that was the scheduled uh, gift from Mike DeCesar from the Water Street Lofts. Although I will say we thought it was a $5,000 gift that was coming, so he really graciously surprised us by going to $10,000 for that gift. Uh, we did also receive a donation of $50 from Marcy Platt for the fire department in memory of Talon Floor, who was also mentioned earlier in his, his donation that helped to save lives. I would ask for a motion to accept Marcy's generous donation. So moved. Second. Been a motion and a second discussion. Not objection, that motion is approved. And hearing no objection, that motion is approved with our thanks to Ms. Platt. 
for the police department, Officer DeMuth and K-9 Vigo received their state certification on June 30th. They began their normal patrol duties over the holiday weekend, and we are now back to having two working K-9 teams at SPD. For Public Works, a welcome to Corey Brown, who's been hired as a maintenance two in sewer maintenance. And also good news in that Big Island Waterworks conducted its annual lead and copper sampling in June, an annual requirement of the Ohio EPA, and lab personnel collected 30 samples from city residents who kindly agreed to participate. All 30 samples came in under the EPA's action levels, so no further testing is required at this time. Also, as a traffic calming measure, the intersections of Harrison and Barker Streets will transition to a four-way stop starting on July 23rd. The intersection is currently a two-way stop for motorists traveling on Harrison. In preparation for the traffic pattern change, advance warning signs have been posted to give motorists early notice of the coming change. For the planning department, the long-awaited DORA, or outdoor refreshment area, has been approved by the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Final logistical issues are currently being worked through in order to prepare for an official launch date, which will be announced soon. The planning division has also issued a record-breaking 11 public vendor permits since the beginning of 2021, which shows, you know, uh, Mr. DeCesar spoke of that increased amount of programming, I think increased activity in the streets from pedestrians, cyclists, et cetera, is creating increased uh, street uh, life, which is increasing the demand for those vendors. So that's exciting. Also, the next Arts and Culture Commission meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, July 20th at 5.15 p.m. The Landmarks Commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, July 21st at 5 p.m. The Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for July has been canceled, and the next Planning Commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, July 28th at 5 p.m. A quick update on Sandusky Transit it continues to provide free rides for people needing to get to COVID vaccination sites, which is supported by ODOT's Rides to Community Immunity Grant. And for recreation, Sandusky Rec has been very busy, rolling into the summer with the 4th of July weekend full of events, including the Boy with the Boot 5K, the Stars and Stripes Festival, and the Fireland Symphony Orchestra, which played a free concert to the Great Lawn of the Jackson Street Pier with over 1,200 people in attendance. Many of those people stuck around and joined others to watch Cedar Point's fireworks show complete with music from Mix 102.7 being played to the lawn to coincide with the fireworks. Sandusky Rec, all, along with the Whiteman Weber Safety Fair and Kids Fun Festival, hosted the first Movies by the Bay at the Jackson Street Pier featuring Zootopia on the Firelands Health LED screen. Several hundred people attended and participated in the raffle and bought ice cream at the event. And the fun continues with Tuesday movies and Thursday concerts all summer. Check Facebook and Sandusky's recreation website for more information throughout the year. Mills Creek Golf Course had a, fourth, a banner 4th of July weekend with rounds played in a tournament. This continues to be a great season for the golf course. And work continues in J.C. Park at the Scott May Courts. The courts were recently repaved by the city's public works department, and a playing surface will be added in time for an August 7th basketball tournament scheduled for the park. Improvements will continue throughout the summer and early fall to both the basketball courts and rather baseball field. That concludes my remarks for this evening. I'm happy to take any comments or answer questions. Thank you. Uh, questions for the city manager. No questions for the city manager. Next item on our agenda, items of old business. Any items of old business? Items of new business. Next Mr. item on our agenda, items of new business. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had several calls. I'm sure most of the commissioners and the, I talked to the uh, law director today and the, over the weekend to the uh, police chief about fireworks, legal or illegal, they're still going to blow them up. I don't care about House Bill 106 uh, with the governor, whatever they do. They're always going to be there 5, 10, 15 years from now. So for a quality of life uh, issue, we got elderly, a lot of elderly in town, family pets, the hospital, we got rest homes and a lot of people. I talked to two nurses and they said uh, they did not appreciate two, three in the morning. You know, it sounds like cannons going off. So I would like to, if we could do a homer or whatever, make Sandusky 12 to 12, 12 o'clock at night, the show's over, and then hopefully uh, we can put some teeth in this with a fine or through a rest at 12 o'clock Scott AM. We just cannot, if we want to uh, go forward as a place to live, work, and play, then we got a hip bell that's asleep at night. People have jobs, people are in the hospital, so let's be real. Okay, that's it. And if anybody wants to follow up my comment, but I would like uh, to make a motion to get restricting the 12 to 12. Uh, whatever happens, somebody said over the weekend, well, the governor could uh, veto it. Big deal. They're going to fire him anyway. <laughs> I'm going to take Mr. Wyington's uh, motion as a request for the law director to present to us legislation to modify 
our existing ordinances, and um, I will second that. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a uh, motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Meinzer. I, I, I understand the emotion, and, and uh, you know, I have a dog and, you know, we have grandchildren, but being on the engine and, and I know the police, there's, if, if we have laws that you're not allowed to shoot them in Ohio. So putting in a law that you can't shoot them after midnight just seems a little silly. Like, it's not going to work. You know, they're not going to listen. Anybody that's breaking the Ohio law is going to break the midnight rule. And you're going to, I'd like to hear from the police and fire chief, but uh, you know how frustrating it is. And unless they uh, blow their fingers off or catch a house on fire, you can't put a lot of time into it, chasing them around. Because there's other real things going on that are, uh, people are dialing 911 for as well. So, Chief I, Oliver, do you do you have do you have a position on this? Well, I was under the understanding if uh, when Commissioner Waddington talked to me, this was going to be something that was maybe brought up potentially if the legislature determines to override the governor's veto, because technically there's a law in the books that say they're illegal as it is. Um, the way it stands right now, it's darn near un unenforceable. Uh, there was uh, a lot more fireworks than there are we're capable of stopping. So what we sort of have done in the past, and this, this goes at least countywide from, from my knowledge, because I, I come from the sheriff's office and we were sort of doing the same thing the city of Sandusky was and so does Perkins Township and on and on and on. Kind of the unwritten rule was sort of midnight for us and it was again this year. Um, the majority of the fireworks shows that were taking place in the city of Sandusky sort of resolved themselves around midnight. Uh, there were some other areas that we had to go tell them it's it's over now. Uh, got to be after that, it was sporadic. We didn't get a lot of calls, a lot of complaints about where they were, but we did get a few. And, and after midnight, if people didn't stop it, we would issue summons. We issued a couple of them. Uh, Fourth of July, we issued a couple more. Fifth of July, we got a couple more calls last night, and that's kind of how we go forward with it. I'm not opposed to the legislation, just like I told the commissioner. I, I mean, again, there's there's a law in place as it is where it stands now. If, if if the commission wants to say midnight's where we see fit to say, all right, enough's enough, then that's what the police department will do. Um, hopefully, everybody listens and does as they're told. And if they don't, that's that's what we're here for. So, I'm not opposed to it. I, I think it's a good idea. I, you know, I, I feel bad for the families and for the people in the hospital and for people with pets, but. It is 4th of July, and it's one of those things that we're going to deal with every year going forward. So in the new led, the new law with the state of Ohio, they were talking about 12 different days, um, holidays. So <laughs> that's just something to think. It wasn't just 4th of July. It was There were some other holidays in there, too. So, Additional comments, Commissioner? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Murray. Just a couple observations based upon the, the conversation. Uh, first, if the legislature does not override the governor's veto, then... Yeah, I don't think there's any need to go forward with legislation. But if it doesn't, I think we need to do something to, to at least say to the public, this is what we expect as, you know, good behavior. I don't like laws we can't enforce. That's a problem. It's always a bad idea to adopt laws that you can't enforce. But, uh, but, but to do nothing uh, also seems wrong. And I think we should give the police department some tools to be able to say, hey, kid. I mean, you can't be shooting the fireworks off after midnight. Just go home and, and don't do that anymore. Um, so I, I, I think on balance it's okay to say something if the, governor, if the governor's veto is not overridden, which I think it will be. Additional comments, Commissioner? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Meisner? Probably shouldn't say this, but uh, what we used to do back in the day is go take the fireworks away from the kids who were shooting them off throughout town. We come back down to the fire station and give them to the underprivileged kids around the station. Let them shoot them off all Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody complained in that neighborhood. Interesting strategy. Except for a couple guys. Confession. <laughs> Comments, commission. You don't do that. <laughs> it's, a fire, it's a fire policy. Yeah. That's a dinosaur yeah. speaking. <laughs> we I, actually don't even want to seize fireworks. We usually try to take care of them with a garden hose and things yeah. like that because it's not safe anymore. So. I will say that, uh, Commissioner Waddington, your, your uh, uh, <coughs> motion, I think, is very generous. Um, I have not seen midnight for two decades now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I am one of those that would like to see it be like 9, 9.30 at night, but uh, that probably is unworkable also. 
Yeah. It doesn't get dark till now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, I, I believe we have a motion and a second on the, on the table to ask. Uh, I believe the motion is to uh, ask our law department to bring to us legislation uh, uh, that will eliminate uh, the use of fireworks from after midnight. Uh, with a motion and a second, I would ask. Uh, Hang on, Mr. Hang on, Hang on. Commissioner Poole. Okay, is this? Oh, never mind. He's going to bring us something based on what works, right? Because putting a time limit on something you're not allowed to do doesn't, like he says, doesn't make much sense. I think it's appropriate that we take a roll call vote on that motion. Oh, okay. Mr. Brady, Brady, call the roll. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. That motion is passed, and uh, Mr. Heil will be asked to bring us some legislation. Sure. Mr. 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 Chairman. Mr. Murray. If I may, uh, since our wonderful commission clerk has decided to take her uh, talents elsewhere, <laughs> and we wish her well, uh, we do need to uh, consider the process by which we would hire uh, another commission clerk, and for that reason, I would ask for um, uh, an executive session and move for one. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner. Could Mr. that just be commissioners only? Does that have to? Because I mean, th that's who works for us, right? That's fine. Works for for us. That can be commissioners. Because yeah. I've talked to a couple, two or three of the commissioners. Uh, I know I talked to Dennis today too. Uh, you know, we could be free of what we want, want to say. Would it be appropriate to have a person from HR here for that, Mary, or would you prefer not to? Mr. Chairman, it's just as simple for us to make a decision and tell, and come back and tell them what to do. I mean, sure. it's really we're just going to decide how we want to do and it. And how we want to do it, what right. What parameters. For I think that's us. appropriate. And if that's, what's, if that's what the law director says is allowed. Uh, I would say that... Um, just from point of consideration, you could probably have that discussion in your executive session, and then if you'd like to invite someone else in to join you, you can do so. Excellent. There's no decision. Yeah, that's what we'll discuss. do. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? Ms. Briggs, you call roll on the motion, please. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That, most, that uh, executive session is set. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Murray. I need to make a motion for a second uh, executive session that also would be uh, commissioners only with respect to pending litigation. Yeah, no second. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Murray, <laughs> Mr. Murray, is it appropriate for city manager to uh, attend that hearing or no? What did he just say? Uh, well, it is what I just said. Okay. I, I didn't hear the motion, I'm sorry. The, the, the motion was to have an executive session uh, strictly for commissioners uh, to, to uh, uh, speak on pending litigation. Litigation, okay. Thank you. But a motion to second. <coughs> Ms. Briggs, do you call roll on the motion, please? Mr. Brady? No. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That motion is passed. We have that executive session set. I need to make a motion for uh, to appoint a commission clerk as uh, uh, to, uh, to appoint a interim commission clerk uh, to our law director, Brendan Heil, uh, because as Mr. Murray indicated, tonight is the last uh, meeting of our present commission clerk and we need uh, someone certified to sign documents from the clerk's position. So if I could have a motion for that. So moved. Second. 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 Was it? Oh. Just would you repeat the motion after it's second? The motion is to appoint our law director to be the interim commission clerk okay. for that period of time we're between hiring. Thank you. Yeah. I think we've had a motion and a second. Discussion? Ms. Sprague, do you call roll on the motion, please? Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. That appointment is now yours, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you. I will endeavor to read as clearly as Ms. Spriggs, but <laughs> no additional don't, don't hold me to that the first couple times. <laughs> additional items of new business. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Harris. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, in addition to, um, you know, us uh, speaking about fireworks tonight, I thought I would just uh, take a few moments and chime in on uh, things that are take it, that have taken place in our community that are perhaps uh, much more serious than, uh, than that of fireworks. Uh, so therefore, uh, I would just like to speak on, uh, you know, the recent, uh, what seems to be the recent uh, spike in crime and, and murders throughout our community, as well as speak to those um, who have a tendency to debate on Facebook and offer statistics to make their case for how dangerous Sandusky is or is becoming, as well as the notion that by simply adding more police officers, it will reduce or prevent crime. Despite some individuals' belief, I believe that more officers would not prevent uh, these crimes from happening. Although I don't believe this issue uh, to be as prevalent in our community in comparison to others, by adding more officers or having more boots on the ground, so to speak, some of which could belong to individuals with racial biases that have led to, many, uh, to what many of us have come to know as systemic racism, meaning that we have systems and institutions that produce racially disparate outcomes, regardless of the intentions of the people who work within them. Besides, I prefer quality over quantity, and quality officers is what I believe we have within the SPD. Instead, yeah, instead we must continue to implement community outreach and investment making people feel as if they are actually a part of their community by creating opportunity and providing resources and programming, especially for young adults living in at-risk situations or for those struggling with addiction. All of which leads me to the rest of what I'm gonna share with you all tonight, and I'll do my best to get through this as this is obviously a little bit personal, but... Uh, See, for the second time in five years, I've lost a loved one due to gun violence. The first, my nephew, David Barrero of Lorraine, 23 years old, who on December 10th, 2016, was gunned down after a few men invaded his apartment and shot him four times uh, before he could even leave his bedroom, leaving him to die in the arms of his twin brother. Fast forwarding, to this past Saturday's incident involving the murder of a dear friend, Elijah Cannon, I was quickly reminded of that terrible feeling, that feeling of hurt, sadness, and feeling like I simply ran out of time, and all, as well as others running out of time in our attempt to help uh, turn things around for him as he so desperately wanted to. If one were to base their opinion of Elijah, Based off, of his, based off of his appearance, criminal history, or stories that they might have heard, then that might lead one to paint a picture that depicts that of a menace to society. And if that is how you choose to perceive him, then you're entitled to your own opinion. However, one shouldn't formulate an opinion based, or, or however, one shouldn't formulate an opinion about anyone unless they have taken the time to understand their circumstances and where it is they come from circumstances of which may have very well had a lot to do with where they are and how they perceive the world and those in it. Whether anything from Elijah witnessing his first murder at six years old, moving to Sandusky at the age of 12 from Milwaukee, being in and out of foster homes, etc., thus not ever really having the opportunity, some of just the basic opportunities many of us had, he essentially had to fight and get and to maintain everything he had. Fortunately for myself and a few others, we got the opportunity to know him on a much deeper level, one that depicted something far different. A person that taught himself and spoke three languages, a hardworking Mason who was funny, charismatic, and full of light, an individual that shared a strong desire to give back and teach at-risk skilled trades, or teach at-risk youth skilled trades in an attempt to prevent them from choosing a similar path to his. An individual that prior to his death was getting ready to continue laying stone on the exterior of a friend's home while on house arrest and in a boot due to an injury that occurred as a result of an incident that took place just eight months prior 
uh, where he was shot multiple times and nearly lost his life and spent, and spent close to two months in the hospital. You see, my friend, he was a fighter and he was resilient. Someone so close to turning the page in his life, someone who had a meaningful impact on several people and that personally made several deposits into my life, but God had other plans. I'll wrap this up by saying this, that it's one thing to share opinions and statistics online from your, or, yeah, from online or from your smartphone, but it's entirely different than, than speaking and forging meaningful relationships with those who live or have lived a drastically different life from many of ours. One that were not afforded, uh, ones that were not afforded the same basic opportunities as many of us. Lastly, I've always been asked many times why I became a commissioner and how I plan on or how I am bridging the gap. And well, just know that through, uh, that through the work of myself and others, whether that be the Drive for a Better Future program or our minority business empowerment team, or more importantly, just simply building lasting relationships with individuals that you can't access by sitting in a commission chamber or just knocking on a random door. Every day, I and other like-minded individuals have been and will continue our commitment at making Sandusky a place of opportunity and hope. Rest in peace, my brother, and God bless and continue prayers for everyone that has recently uh, lost a loved one. Thank you. Any additional items of new business, commissioners? Any residents like to provide a comment on any item affecting city business? I'd ask that you limit your comments to five minutes. Step to the microphone and identify yourself. Ms. Spriggs, do you have any comments written or emailed? I have one, uh, President Brady. It comes from Mr. Tim Schwanger of 362 Sheffield Way in Sandusky. He said, uh, in regards to Lions Park, I participated in the Kids Bash at the Bay held at Lions Park this past Saturday. Over 100 young children attended this event. A number of concerns were shared regarding needed amenities near the pavilion and slash pad area. Restrooms near the pavilion areas were part of the Lions Park master plan and have yet to be constructed. An aesthetically pleasing port john is needed. Additional trash receptacles are needed near the splash pad. In regards to Sandusky Bay Pavilion, the play equipment has been removed. What is the timeline for replacement? And Shoreline Park, is there a timeline for improvements to the West Finger Dock Drive and turnaround area? Thank you, Ms. Briggs. Is there? We will move into executive session after a three minute recess to clear the room. <coughs> See you
complicated. And you guys stick around to the drivers. Come on, old man. We've returned from uh, our first executive session, and now we will recess once again for our second executive session regarding pending litigation. Well, that was good. <laughs> that was live? <laughs> Let me all come on, old man. So now we got to go back upstairs.
Sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I will. It's the fine kettle of fish you got me into. <laughs> you know. Is that on? Okay, we're on. We're live. We live. We're live, then. Barely. Re <laughs> yeah. Return yeah. from our second executive session, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. Second. Motion and a second. We are adjourned.